I am once again asking. Why aren't you playing Power World yet? If you are playing Power World or you're just waiting for this weekend, I do have some things to talk about here. There will be some tips and stuff later in the video, but I want to go over a few things first. Um, the first is this article. Power World now one of just six games ever to hit 1 million concurrent Steam players. It's on par with Baldur's Gate 3. Um, we may be looking at a game of the year situation in January, which is insane. And I don't necessarily think that Power World will in fact be game of the year, like at least for me personally. But when you're looking at a conglomerate vote, when you're, <coughs> when you're looking at games that had the biggest impact for the year i think you're going to be talking a lot about power world especially come you know like i said time for people's game of the year nominations and votes and stuff this will definitely be on the ballot i do not know whether or not it will win uh because i mean there are some other super heavy hitters coming out this year but it sold four million copies in a little over three days over one million concurrent players over the weekend like if you're not playing this game you need to play it I did a review on it. The link will be in the, in the description, but like, it's just, it's just fun. It's just raw, stupid fun. It's stupid. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely stupid. And it's, but it's in the best possible ways. Like even the most ludicrous things like you hear, oh, you can butcher your pals. And it's like, oh, that sounds absolutely scandalous, but it's really just like KOing the pal a second time and then they're gone permanently and you get extra resources from it but what makes it funny is they pretend like they knew people were going to make a big deal out of it so they actually actually censored the entire thing and it's it actually turns it from something into a little bit weird and uncomfortable to something hilarious like without the censor bar it would just be like Ugh, okay well this is a thing because there's no blood or anything it's just you are you melee the pal a few times again and then you get extra resources from it. But they censor it, which makes it funnier. Um, a lot of the monster designs are amazing. There are some that are going to remind you of Pokemon. Don't get me wrong. I'm fully aware that, you know, there are some Pokemon-like pals. But, I mean, when you really, really look at them, like, the ones that look like Pokemon are just animals. I see a lot of people comparing, like... Uh, Magnium with a poke uh, with one of the pals in. It's like, yeah, I can see it, but also it's a dinosaur made of plants. Uh, you don't own that. Uh, some people are comparing Don Fan with um, the mammoth pals, but again, it's a mammoth pal. There's two options for that. There's ice, and then there's grass. And Don Fan, I think, is ground, so it doesn't even matter. But, like, it's, it's, it's not, yes, there's definitely Pokemon callbacks, but there's nothing illegal about it, and there's actually nothing even skeevy or shady about it. It's, the, the, the references, the, the, the duplications there are, like, it's a penguin. Oh, no, it's Piplop. It's a freaking penguin, yo. Oh, it's Zaboltra. No, it's, it's a horse, and horses are sometimes associated with electricity, I think. Did Thor ride horses? I think Thor rode goats. Or maybe he rode a chariot pulled by goats. That's not important. The point is, I don't know. You should be playing it. But anyways, I'm going to also do some, like, talk about some, some like, little tricks and stuff to help you get started. Or if you're early game or just got started. Okay, so the first thing is breeding. Um, in order to breed a pal, you'll need this device. You'll you'll see this building when you unlock it. Just check your technology tree every few levels. And then you'll need to put cake in the breeding farm. And what that's going to do is going to allow a male and a female pal to breed together and create a new pal. Um, it will be... Unfortunately, there's not really a solid guide out there. There's a few PDFs you can find if you go on Reddit um, that has some of the stuff listed. But the big thing to know is that you get a pal of a different type, typically, when you breed two together, unless you breed two of the same pal species together, then you'll get that pal species. Now, the reason you want to breed is because when you breed, you pass down passives. So I bred 
this Anubis and got Musclehead and Ferocious passed down. It also had Conceited, and then it got Suntan Lover. I want to say randomly. I don't think it actually had Suntan Lo Lover. But yeah, so I also have my um, my super cool and awesome dragon that I use quite a bit. It's this guy. Um, I'm going to actually pull him out. My Ephedram, and the reason I call it must because I bred this and I got three gold abilities. And now anytime I need to breed something with good abilities, because this has 20% attack and 30% attack, I think it's actually the same as my Anubis in terms of those skills. But yeah, anyways, yeah, that's the point of breeding is to get the skills you want on a single pal to increase your efficiency. Because, you know, instead of having, just as an example, instead of having three of this guy for fires... If you have two of them with plus 30% plus 30 or 50% work speed, then you only need two of them to do the exact same amount of work as three, or to do more work than three of them would. Um, and so that lets you condense the amount of pals that you have in the base, and then it lets you do more things in a single base. So now instead of having three fire makers, I have two fire makers and then an extra gatherer, and so on and so forth. Um, and the reason I have specifically this fox and this cat in here is because you can create hybrids. Uh, there's not a lot of them in the game, but there are some. Like, And I know there's a there's an ice-type Mao, but you have to basically breed a Mao with an ice-type, and then there's a, a percent chance that that egg will be the ice Mao. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get right now, which is why I have the Mao in there with my ice fox. Um... And I, I, I haven't seen it happen yet, so I don't know if it'll, like, appear in a, appear out of a dark egg. It'll be, like, a hybrid type. Or if it'll, like, they'll, they'll lay an ice egg. I don't know how that's going to work. That's another reason I'm doing it is because I want to see how it works. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's breeding in a nutshell. You can get hybrids. Um, you can get better skills on pals or passives, I should say. And it's just very, very, very helpful. And important to do. We have a bunch of breeding. And you also need a lot of, a lot of uh, incubators because as you're exploring, you'll find tons and tons and tons of pals. You'll notice I have this, or eggs, I should say. And you'll notice I have this uh, German Tide Ignis that actually came from an egg that I found down by the volcano over here. I don't want to spoil too terribly much, so go exploring and have fun. Um, in the next section, I actually will do a lot more spoiling and tell you where to find some really good and cool pals in order to uh, get moving. So, some of the more important pals you can get as you level up is going to be, number one is this King Paka. Um, riding him actually increases your carry capacity, which lets you move around more often. There's something else about carry capacity I'm going to show in a second. Um, another carry capacity uh, pal is Lunaris. It actually has an ability called Anti-Gravity, which... As I said, it increases your carrying capacity and allows you to kind of be able to move more um, stuff, which is, again, really great for early game. I got, th I got them really early, and I'm trying to... Okay, so you can actually breed Lunaris... By fusing a dire rule, dire wolf with a ruby. So dire, dire howl. It's called dire whatever. Anyways, the the thing says dire wolf, but it's a dire howl. Uh, you get them level 12, 13. Um, and you can get them. Actually, be easier to show you this from the pal deck. This is a live recording, unscripted. I'm just doing things that I think of as I go. So bear with me. Um. The dire howl. There's is there a search function? There's not. Dire howl. Okay, so you can find dire howls everywhere, right? <laughs> so go catch a couple dire howls. Try to get some good skills or passives, and then you can breed it with a uh, ruby, which is one of the first pals you get in several starting areas. Um, once you get those two, you can breed them into Lunaris. And like I said, Lunaris has a passive where it increases your carry capacity by, I think, 20 or 30%. It's a good bit. Uh, it usually adds like 120 to 150 to my carry capacity. So between that and the King Paka, you really don't have to put that many points into weight. You'll just be able to carry stuff a lot. Now then, let's say... You do over go over capacity, right? Like, uh, 
Uh, we'll see here. I need stuff. Here we go. Okay. So I have 9,999 wood. I can't move, but I really want to get this wood over to a box. Well, this is the best use of a grappling gun, actually. Um, of course, you can always split the sack by holding down shift and splitting it like that. But we don't want to do that. We're lazy. We want to do this as, as few motions as possible. You can actually use your grappling gun to move. Um, it's very useful for this kind of thing because you can, like, have, like, if you have multiple bases and you go to a base and, oh, they, I have 500 ore that I need to transport to my other base. You can actually do it like this. And there are times when you may get stuck, but if you swap weapons with your mouse wheel or whatever button you have on your controller, it'll it'll change your weapon and drop that. So it's very, very, very helpful for getting around. Um, several pals can also fly. You'll get those at some point. Uh, what's the first one that it was? The very first flyer, I think, was... Uh, yeah, it's Nightwing. Nightwing's very slow and doesn't have a lot of stamina. You're kind of wanting, gonna want to, even if you love Nightwing and you just want to use it forever, you're still going to want to upgrade your flyers as time goes on. I'm currently using Elfried, Elfriedren because it's one of my main pals for combat, so I just kind of use it. Um, because it's already in my party, I can only have five pals, and you want to condense as much as you can. So this is one of my main combatants. And it has my saddle, and I. It's, the only problem is it's really big, so sometimes it can be hard to dismount. There we go. But yeah, so flying is super important. Um, the very first saddle that you get, which is Malpaca, is super slow. Like, you can run it, and it'll be fine. But the dogs are the 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 smaller four-legged animals tend to be the fastest. Uh, dire wolf ha dire wolf saddle, he's, it goes really fast. And if you can get it with the ability swiftness, which you just have to catch a bunch of them, but you can get swift on it. Um, that's going to give you thirty percent movement speed. So now, I mean, you go so fast, and you can do this with any pal. You just farm them until you get swift. And then you can absolutely zoom. And, you know, these later dogs get double jumps and such. And they jump super high. So very, very, very helpful. And like I said, the first one you get that can really start zooming is the dire wolf. So I would suggest pretty early just catching a bunch of dire wolves until you get one with plus movement speed. It doesn't have to be the three, level three movement speed. You just want to get plus movement speed. Um, other than that, everything is more or less self-explanatory. It'll kind of, the game, you, you get stuff, like, kind of spoon-fed to, to you as time goes forward. And eventually it'll be all second nature. It's definitely not, like, a great very first game you'll ever play, especially for a survival game. It's it's quite, it's not the most complicated game ever, but it, it can get a little intensive as you try to learn everything. Um, and of course it's nighttime, I'm bored, I need something to do with my pals, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a nap. Um, if all players in an instance to go to bed, it becomes daytime, and now my pals are working again. Other cool things of note are these boss monsters respawn every hour, and they are how you get ancient parts, so you definitely want to do those. Um, and just exploring in general is super important. I, I, there's 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 cool pals everywhere of various levels and sizes and the wolf the first one you'll probably come across is Chillette. You also generally I mean you see this Memorest. I actually I captured it. I'm only level 31, so it had seven levels on me and it took some time. Absolutely took some time. It took about 20 red balls, which is the tier four balls, but I caught it. So don't be afraid if you see something you really like. Like if you get this Azure robe and you're on level 12, go for it. Especially if you got friends, y'all get over there, take a bunch of whatever the strongest uh, pal balls you have, and just go for it. You'll get it eventually. Um, a lot of times, a pal will say, like, when you target it with your, your ball, it'll say 1%, but that's, like, the absolute base chance. You'll also gain percent when you throw it. So, again, for this Mamarest, I had a 2% chance to catch it, but once I actually hit it with the ball, the first tick is free, and it goes up to 10%. So, um, yeah. It did. T you usually can catch a pal, you know, even six, seven levels above you in 20, 30 balls. So don't give up. Get the pals that you want, because that's where a lot of the fun of the game is. 
Um, base construction can be a little buggy. Pals don't always navigate things very well. You probably see my best base is a little wonky looking right now because I'm trying to like keep everything open so they can move in and out of it. We just unlocked metal, but we don't have anywhere near enough um, or to be able to build things out of metal. But eventually, uh, we'll do that. Other than that, I don't really think there's any like super cool or super good tips I can give you outside of if you're not playing the game, play the game. Even if you're playing it solo, I think the game's probably still really fun. I have a couple of friends who play it solo. They're super happy with it. Um, you Oh, I do know one other thing I can tell you, actually. You can get guns fairly early. Well, there's a couple of things. You're going to have a lot of money. Eventually, you're going to start running low on money. It, it'll happen. But you can sell pals, and pals are worth really good money. But you see this, this right here. If you can get down here, this guy, there's a merchant that actually sells guns and ammo. Um, specifically hand, little pistols. They're not amazing, but if you can get down here, if you can, you know, once you get your Nightwing and you can get flying and stuff and you can get down here, you can buy guns. And that's what we're here for, right? When we started this game, every one of us, we signed up for Pokemon with guns. Well, here's your guns. Um, you can get a makeshift handgun, and you can't craft your first pistol until, like, level 25 or something. It's really high level. But they, he sells the gun for 16k, and then he sells all ammo types. He also sells heat-resistant armor, uh, but you'll probably need that before you ever come this way. I don't know if... I don't think you need heat resistance to get here if you stay on the beach, but there are some high-level enemies here, so you do want to be careful. Uh, because dying sucks in some situations especially like out here at night because it gets cold but yeah um what else is there anything else of interest or note having an auto farming farm is really important you build like berry fields and wheat fields and have a couple of water types a couple of gatherers and a couple of uh seed planters as you can see here my big boy is actually going to plant some seeds now So yeah, he plants seeds, he waters the seeds, and also keeps my food over here cool in the freezer, and he harvests the seeds. So, or they, I should say. Uh, it's all very, it's all very automated, and then the gatherers will eventually grab everything and collect it and put it here in this cooler. And yeah, things are pretty much automated at my base. I still, we, I'm, we're trying to get to 32 because that's when we can get a third base. And once you get a third base, you can have. Um, an automation base, you can have a food base, you can have a ore base. We actually, this is our ore base, um, because ore respawns every couple of days. So we basically just built a base here through a bunch of pals that can dig in it, and they're just constantly mining all this ore as it respawns. And that's where we get our stuff. This is, uh... I kind of want... Unfortunately, they're not gathering it the way I would want them to, so that's a problem. But that's because we have so many diggers. They have so many things to dig that they... I think they go for what they're the highest level of that also needs to be done. So, like, if you have a level... If you have something that's like a level 4 digger and a level uh, 3 gatherer... Let's see. Nope, that's not true. Oh, yeah, 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 it is true. Okay, so he's um he's level three mining so they're actually focusing on the mining rather than the transporting because there's constantly stuff to mine so in order to fix that i can show you this live as it were in order to fix that i can take some of them out as diggers i can't move game oh okay i guess because he was there um, so yeah, I can actually remove some of these level three diggers here. Wait. Yeah, see, they're level three. That's actually pretty good. What I want is someone with... Uh, you want the hand to be high level, and generally for that, you want something that has hands. Um, let's see, let's see. What has... A good gather rate. Oh, we actually don't have any high-level transporters. These are good transporters, but I don't think we have any more right now, so... 
Yeah. I need to, uh... I need to go recruit some more... Wixens. Oh, we do have more Wixens. Here we go. Okay, so I can put these Wixens in here. Like so. Oh, those... That's not transport. That's used. Okay. So really, I would need more of the... Sorry. While I do understand things, I don't know everything perfectly yet. So we actually want... High level gathering. Wait, that was a good one. Where was that? Oh, yeah, it was another one of these. That works. So, yeah, do this. And that should help out with the gathering situation here because they have a higher level gathering than mining, and so they'll focus on that. And then secondary will be they, uh, they'll keep this going. Get out of my way. And, yeah, see, just like that, we uh, have plenty of ore going through. So yeah, if you have something like the Anubis and you're trying to get it to do handiwork, like let's say you have mining in the base, but there's also stuff that needs to be crafting, it'll actually prioritize the handiwork. Once it's found on done all the handiwork, then it'll move to mining. If there's nothing left to mine, then it'll move to transporting. So something else to keep in mind. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for this video. Um, the only other thing I can say is cooking is very important. I know it may seem like you could just fill the box up with berries and be fine. But the better the food, the full, the faster they'll get full. The faster they get full, the, um, the less time they spend eating and the more time they spend working. And see, this actually is another really big thing. I'm going to go ahead and fix it now. Um, you want to keep this first slot full like this um what this is gonna do is come on now what keeping the first slot full like that does is makes them eat that without delivering stuff to it so as you saw there was like raw weed in here i don't want weed in here i want them to be eating just the berry sandwiches the wheat and the eggs are for cooking and unfortunately the way the pals work if you have a feeder bowl that with empty slots, they'll deliver gathered food to that first and then to a box or something secondary. So by having berry jam in all these slots, but the first one having 68 of them, they'll only eat out of this first slot. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's just making it's just making sure they eat the food you want them to eat. And don't deliver things here because once things are in here, you actually can't select them for cooking. So, like, as you see, I've got this cake here. Um, but if the ingredients were in here, I wouldn't have been able to see them in order to cook it. And theoretically, I wouldn't have even known it was there without checking. Still not getting the egg that I want. But that's fine. Anyways, that actually is all. Um... I hope you got something out of it between, you know, the praise for the game and just in general um, talking about it. I, I think it's a fantastic game. I think it's actually a game of the year contender super early, which sounds crazy, but everybody else loves it too. So when it comes time to vote, people are going to be thinking about Pal World. And I hope by that point you've gotten to play it rather than just having to live vicariously. It's a pretty PC intensive game. I hear the the low the minimum spec recommendations runs like garbage. So you really do kind of need a decent computer or uh, Xbox. It's on Game Pass. So you can actually play it without even paying the 30 bucks. You can just play it for free. And I hope they support this game. I hope they continue to support it. I hope they continue to build on it. Um, because this game has the potential for a lot of longevity and definitely a sequel. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it or found it informative, like, comment, subscription, all that good stuff help out a bunch, uh, especially if you like reviews or talking about game news and stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Deuces, dummies.